In today's breaking news, Bitcoin is down, XRP is down and crypto is crashing. And the warning signs have been right in front of your eyes. Don't panic though, don't look short term, think long term. Because crypto will come back bigger and better than ever before. And soon enough, XRP will rightfully take its place at number one, replacing Bitcoin. And I am not the only one who believes this. Firstly, though, we got this interview with the European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde, a warning to you to buckle up as this financial system shifts from old to new and inflation continues to spiral out of control. A soft landing is not guaranteed. Take a listen. Given the magnitude of the shock to inflation, a soft landing is not guaranteed. Now, what do I mean by soft landing? I would define that as avoiding either a recession or a major deterioration of employment. If we look at historical rate cycles since 1970, we can see that when major central, when major central banks hiked interest rates while energy prices were high, the cost to the economy were usually quite steep. Only around 15%, 1.5, of the successful soft landings in this period have been achieved following energy price shocks. But this cycle has so far not followed past patterns. So there you have it. Given the magnitude of the shock to inflation, given that this cycle has not been following previous patterns, a crash seems inevitable and it will likely be the worst financial crash in history. I'm not trying to spread FUD. I'm just telling you how it is from how I see it from the research that I have conducted. Crypto is crashing right now and this is a sign of what is incoming. And there have been numerous signs as Bitcoin fell to break above 74k twice showcasing a double top on the weekly chart which is negative news with Bitcoin miners having to constantly sell just to break even with their profit with what they're trying to do to the initial ETF enthusiasm from institutions slowing down significantly now and now more recently to the inflation data. This just in secured overnight financing rates jumped to 5.4% the highest level in history. This is very, very worrying. To further clarify what this means, basically this here measures the interest rate banks charge each other to borrow money overnight, which is a key indicator of how easy or hard it is for banks to borrow the money. This of course will impact the overall economy and right now it is slowing it down as it becomes more expensive for banks to borrow money. A market crash seems imminent, but of course, this is not financial advice and always do your own research. But based on my research and based on times like these, where I want to remind you again, you can't look short term, you need to think long term, don't be emotional, be logical and also understand that industry experts and leaders are telling you this is happening and they're also telling you that in the long term, Bitcoin has no future. And XRP is best positioned to take its place. I'm not just spreading speculation. This is the proof right here in front of your eyes. We can see here from Cyprus, firstly, just like the European Central Bank president warned you that a soft landing is not guaranteed, here we can see the European Central Bank has also published a document stating that there is no need for an inefficient proof of work mechanism like the one enabling Bitcoin. There it is in black and white, as plain as day, they do not want Bitcoin. Or how about this here from Mr. Man XRP? I keep hearing people suggesting Bitcoin will be a reserve of sorts and things are priced in Bitcoin. It was never Bitcoin and will never be Bitcoin. The Bank of Italy put out a document stating that decentralized blockchain cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin is not clear which problems it solves, but it is clear to which problems it creates, environmental problems like with the mining and fraud. So Bitcoin, therefore, in their eyes, has no fundamental value. Now, whether this is the truth of the matter or not, if the central banks of the world and the global leaders of the world see Bitcoin as a problem with no fundamental value, they will not want to use it in the long term, confirming that Bitcoin in the long term has no future. That is the truth of the matter. Don't be blinded by this. And with that in mind now, I need to bring your attention to this clip here from the Good Morning Crypto with Wall Street expert Linda P. Jones highlighting exactly why Bitcoin is in the future and why XRP will replace Bitcoin. Take a listen. Right, and that's Ripple. 
And the reason for that is, as has been said by, I think it was David Schwartz, you can't have the new currency run on a system and not have anyone to call. In other words, it can't run on Bitcoin because if you have a problem, who do you call, right? Nobody, there's no one to call. There's no one to help you. So you have to have some, some group behind you that is known, transparent, audited, accountable, responsible. That's who Ripple is. In effect, I think Ripple is like the new Federal Reserve. See, Ripple's partnerships and developments make them the perfect candidate to becoming the backbone in this new monetary system. From Smoke here, Ripple and the Swedish bank SEB are collaborating to build a blockchain-based channel between New York and Stockholm to allow consumers to make real-time transfer. This is a huge deal. Furthermore, this paper from the BIS mentioned that traditional financial institutions such as banks and payment service providers have started using stablecoins for their activities, indicating a growing acceptance of stablecoins outside the crypto ecosystem, which is also huge news considering Ripple are going to be releasing their own dollar-backed stablecoin, the RLUSD, soon before the end of the year. And with that in mind, and how the market is currently looking, as I've showed you throughout this video, there is now growing theories and speculation, if you will, that stablecoins are the solution to the US debt crisis. And maybe the RLUSD will be the ideal stablecoin for the task as Ripple has corridors and connections all around the world, even with the growing BRICS alliance, which is threatened in the Western world and the status, status even of the dollar. When the government provides clear guidelines, US private industries will then have the insight to dollarize the world through stablecoin. And as we can hear in this interview on CNBC with French Hill, the FIT21 bill will bring about a new era with crypto regulations kicking the SEC to the sidelines and putting the CFTC in charge. Take a listen. But do you think the former president would be um, more friendly? Well, Joe, it's good to be with you. Look, I think our Fit for Purpose uh, Fit 21 Act that we passed in the House with uh, 71 Democratic votes is exactly the kind of framework that President Trump would support were he reelected and brought back to the White House because it directs the SEC and the CFTC precisely what kind of regulatory framework we need for crypto, for people who are innovating and starting a, a token crypto related firm, uh, how to trade, how to custody those assets. Uh, how to make sure consumers are protected. So that framework, I think, is the right approach. And I think that's what I would recommend to the president, that he endorse if we haven't passed it uh, between now and the end of this Congress. You, as a vice chair of the Financial Services Committee, what, what else would you uh, expect from uh, a, a re-elected President Trump? Well, on the Financial Services Committee, I think you'll see that President Trump wants to be a pro-growth, pro-innovation president. And therefore, something like the, uh, the Fed and the supervisors are considering now this Basel III new capital standards for our commercial banking industry. I think that's a very pro-cyclical approach, meaning it will exacerbate downturns. Uh, it's a approach that we don't need. It's an approach that even the banks in Europe are generally rejecting. So I would hope that President Trump would reject something like full implementation of Basel III and use a much more uh, tailored, appropriate uh, view to bank regulation as well. This will be a massive win if and likely when this passes for crypto and of course also for XRP. XRP have been the ones leading the way. Circle CEO Jeremy Allier here comments on how bullish he is on the regulator that Mika that recently just went live in Europe is such a big deal and one of the most important steps forward for the whole industry. And Ripple and XRP are also Mika compliant as a utility token. Take a listen. You said that by design, stablecoin will make the cost of money transfer zero or close to zero. Are you bullish on the regulators? I am. I am absolutely bullish on the regulators. <laughs> this is a really big deal. You have the European Union, one of the biggest economies in the world. You have the most comprehensive crypto regulation that the world has seen, a huge body of work. And you have the prudential regulators at a kind of EU-wide level. You have very strong central bank regulators in France who have done the work to figure out how do you enable a global stable coin like USDC to function in the European market. 
That's a huge deal. USDC is now legal electronic money in the European Union. And EURC is also legal electronic money in the European Union. And now also with that in mind, keep in mind as well, Ripple RLUSD will be launched soon and will play an essential role in the global stablecoin market, bringing more liquidity onto the XRP ledger, increasing the price of XRP and again playing another key role in allowing XRP to eventually cannibalize and replace Bitcoin. Don't look short term, think long term and I'll see you in the next one.